Hello, welcome to the lecture number 17 of quantum mechanics and molecular spectroscopy. In the previous class, we were looking at the transition probability and we arrived at the equation P f of t equals to E naught square by 4 h bar square omega f i by omega square integral 0 to t prime sin square delta omega by 2 into t divided by delta omega by 2 whole square integral f epsilon dot mu i whole square. Okay. And this I told you is the transition moment integral, transition moment integral TMI and this is the modulating function. Okay. Now, when you plot this modulating function as a function of delta omega, where delta omega is nothing but omega f minus omega i okay? and h bar delta omega is equal to E f minus E i. In that scenario, this will look like this. something like that. Okay. So, uh, this is the function sin square delta omega by 2 divided by delta omega by 2 square. Okay. Now, if this function looks like this, this means the absorption will happen at delta omega is equal to maximum absorption will happen at delta omega by L is equal to 0 that is what is not the resonance condition. But you should always see there will be very tiny absorptions even in the wings okay? and that wings is governed by this uh, where in the wings it will get absorbed will governed by this uh, equation and will, will depend exactly on delta omega. Okay? Now, continuing with the present lecture, now let us go back and look at this equation little bit more carefully, okay, where P of P f of t is equal to E naught square by 4 h bar square omega i f by omega square sin square delta omega t by 2 by delta omega by 2 square Long dot mu i whole square. Okay, uh, I made a small mistake in the last uh, slide, so there is no this integral is uh, this integral does not exist because sine square came over only it was like as an integral, okay, standard integral. So now this is what we get. Okay, now this is the uh, probability 
of transition from a initial state i, a initial state i to a final state f. Of course, as you look at this is a t dependent that means as long as the perturbation is there okay, the transition will take place. Okay. So, longer the perturbation longer will be the transition probability okay, because that time comes here. Okay. So, you see the perturbation if uh, can actually be prolonged and uh, you can increase the transition probability. Now, there is one issue that uh, uh, we will look at in this lecture is the what if f state f is not isolated. So, in this case what is happening you are going from an initial state i which is precisely defined to a final state f which is precisely defined. So, we know that h naught i is equal to e i i and h naught f is equal to e f But this is when f is separated out that means f is a clean state that does not have anything in its vicinity. Okay. But that may not be possible all the time. So, what if f lies midst of some state? So, let us look at the uh, possibility that there is an initial state i which is ground state which is well separated, but there is a final state f. which is in between you know, many, many such states. Okay. So, a state f is embedded in a density, it is not cleanly separated state, but f state f is embedded and where you can think of, now let us think of hydrogen atom. Okay. Now, hydrogen atom let us say E n we know is given by E n is for H atom is given by let us say E 1 by n square. Okay. So, it is just proportional to square of the principal quantum number and E 1 is the E 1 is the uh, principal quantum number 1 state that is 1 s state. So, this is generally equal to if energy is uh, this is minus 13.6 EV divided by n square. Okay. Now, if you go and look at uh, that state and let us go look at large values of n. So, let us say a value of n is equal to say 500, n is equal to 501, n is equal to 502. Okay. Now, if you go to such states, so E 500 is equal to minus 13.6 divided by 500 square E501 is equal to in EV minus 13.6 divided by 501 square in EV and E502 is equal to minus 13.6 by 502 square in EV. Now, if you plot these energies, they will be very close to each other. In fact, the difference will be less than milli, milli electron volts. In fact, it will be micro electron volts. So, essentially the energy levels 501, 502, 500, 501, 501 and 502 are lying on top of each other. So, such will be the scenario. And the other thing is the what happens to the wave function. Now, let us look at I uh, will give you an example very simply as particle in a box. Okay. Now, particle in a box wave function will look like this. So, for n is equal to 1 it looks like this, n is equal to 2 it will look like this. Now, go to very high values of n is equal to let us say 20 and 21. Okay. So, it at 20 it will have 19 nodes. I do not know number, many nodes are there and for 21 there will be just one extra. So, what happens is that the wave function does not really change much okay, between n is equal to 20 and n is equal to 21. So, when you go very high in energy where the energy levels are densely packed, the wave function changes are also very small. Okay. So, for a, so, in this case let us say 
if I have n, n is, okay, let us uh, redefine this. So, n is equal to 499, n is equal to 500, n is equal to 501. If you take 3 states, one can describe the state by wave function on the average by n equal, average wave function will look like psi 500 approximately, okay. It will not change too much. Uh, with respect to 500, if you go down by 1 by 4 to 499 or 1 up by 501, okay. And energy also will remain more or less constant, okay. In such scenario, if there are lot of states, okay. Now, what I want to now get is the transition probability P of T of a state F, okay, but not really of a state F, but states states around f okay total probability will be nothing but integral over f okay p f of t density of states e d okay now what is this density of state so that means for an for a unit energy how many energy any energy levels are packed that is the rho e. So, rho e is nothing but density of states. Okay. Density of states simply means number of energy levels in unit energy. Now, unit energy is kind of you can define 1 joule or 1 calorie or 1 kilo joule or 1 kilo calorie or centimeter inverse or EV or milli EV, it is up to you, okay, what will be the interval that you want to define, okay. If I use that, then my P of T will be equal to E naught square by 4 H bar square omega Fi by omega whole square integral f okay rho e of f okay um, sin square delta omega by 2 to t by delta omega by 2 whole square okay rho f of e t okay now that is my uh, density of states, okay. Now, if you, if I now I want to if I define very narrow range, okay. So for very narrow range, okay, change in wave function is minimal. and can be ignored, okay. So, in that case then your f epsilon dot mu i. So, what I am saying is that this f even though I am looking at transitions to many of these states, I will take an average value and that change is not going to be very much different, okay. Okay, there is a modulus square here, okay. So, I am going to slightly rewrite this. So, this P of T is equal to E naught square by 4 H bar square omega F i by omega square modulus of F epsilon dot mu i whole square integral over F sin square delta omega by 2 T by delta omega by 2 whole square rho f of e t. So, that is the integral that I need to evaluate and this I told you is a constant because the wave function f in average sense is already defined, okay. Now, when you have that let us slightly look at, so let us look at delta omega. Now, what is delta omega? Delta omega is nothing but omega 
f i minus omega. So, this is nothing but E by h bar minus omega okay, where E is equal to h bar omega f i. So, this E is the energy states that we have. So, this is your i that is E i, but this is like E okay, the states around which you are looking at the um, energy. Okay. Now, if I define x as half of E by h bar minus omega okay, into T, then your dE will be nothing but 2 h bar by T into Tx. Okay. Now, so my initial equation was, so I am just to choosing something called variable transformation. I am just trying to change from d e or e to x and I define x in terms of e. Okay. So, if I have what we had is p of t is equal to e naught square by 4 h bar square omega f i by omega whole square okay, modulus of f epsilon dot mu i whole square integral sin delta omega by t uh, 2 sin square into t by delta omega by 2 whole square rho f of e t e. Okay. Now, after this transformation, I can write p of t is equal to e naught square by 2 h bar omega f i by omega whole square integral f epsilon dot mu i square okay, into t rho e okay, rho f of e integral minus infinity to plus infinity sin square x by x square dx. Okay. Now, there is one thing that I want to do is the range. Okay. Now, here I have defined over some range f, but here I have defined over minus infinity to plus infinity. So, there is a change in the change in the integration limit. Okay. If I so, I have changed. So, this change in the integration limit comes because you know you have redefined your E range in E. So, ex essentially I will tell you what it means. It means that if you have some energy that around E you are looking at. Okay? So, essentially you are looking at this small range okay? defined by some average wave function f. But if you move away from this or above this the average wave function is no longer the same. So, your wave function has changed. So, the wave functions corresponding to the energy has changed. So, this integral will not matter anymore. Therefore, you can, you can, you can extend the range from minus infinity to plus infinity because it is a similar to extension of adding zeros because the wave functions are going to be different. So, because of this energy range and you are uh, fixing your energy to a small energy range, this uh, integration can be extended to minus infinity. Now, it turns out that integral minus infinity to plus infinity sin square x by x square dx is nothing but pi. Okay. So, if I do that, then p of t will be equal to pi e naught square by 2 h bar omega f i by omega square integral.
integral f epsilon dot mu i square rho e at f into t. So that is my final equation. Okay. Now, if I define something called w f i, okay, uh, this is nothing but that is the rate constant, sorry rate of absorption. That is nothing but this is the probability into this has probability by time. Okay. So, that is nothing but p of t by t. So, that is nothing but pi epsilon naught by 2 h bar omega f i by omega square modulus epsilon naught i square rho. Okay. Now, I can define some quantity such, such as uh, Wfi equals to okay, 2 pi h bar modulus of mu square into rho of f. Okay. Where now you can look at this equation and then decide modulus of mu square is equal to E naught square by 4 h bar square f epsilon dot mu i square omega f i by omega square. Okay. Okay. There are two values, this is called the um, dipole transition dipole uh, transition. By the way, that was transition, that this was TMI, that is a transition, transition moment integral. So, this is called transition dipole and transition dipole is defined like this. Okay. And omega fi that is rate, sorry w fi that is rate constant, uh, sorry rate for absorption will depend on these values. Okay. Now, for a given uh, uh, f, this is a constant and omega f i is constant and if you know what wavelength of light you are shining this is constant. So, all these are constants, okay. everything that is uh, inside this is a constant. Okay. So, essential, so which means for a given transition mu square is a constant and you know omega f i uh, sorry, so WFI that is rate, okay. 2 pi h bar also is a constant, mu square is a constant. So, 2 pi h bar is some constant k into rho f of e. So, which means your rate constant FI, uh, sorry, rate FI, WFI is given by rho f e. So, which means that from an initial state i to a density of states around f, okay. this rate of transition will depend on the density of states. So, the rate of transition phi is proportional to density of states around f okay. and this is called Fermi's golden rule. So, essentially the transition between a state i to a densely packed states around f, this rate, rate of transition so w f i is equal to uh, pi e naught square by 2 h bar omega f i by omega square f epsilon dot mu i modulus square into rho f. 
okay this can be written as wfi is equal to 2 pi h bar modulus of mu square rho f of e okay and modulus of mu square is equal to e naught square by 4 h bar square omega f i by omega square modulus of f epsilon naught mu epsilon uh, i square okay so this is the transition dipole which of course for a given transition is constant so you can think of it like this your rate constant w f i is proportional to modulus of mu square and w f i is proportional to uh, rho f of e okay so the rate constant for the trans sorry the rate for the transition between i and the dense states f is given by the trans transition dipole okay and density of state okay and these constitutes Fermi's golden rule. Okay, I'll stop here. I will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.